All right. Got it. All right. So um, I'm going to start by reading and by airing our dirty laundry, you know, by reading an internal Morse tile email where you'll be able to pick up the frustration of both the staff that's working in the showroom and the purchaser. Um, and so the staff is in Roanoke, so you don't know them, and the purchaser hides in a dark hole somewhere, and so you don't know him either. So um, it's okay that I'm sharing this information. So the first person I'll read is a showroom staff in Roanoke that is frustrated with lack of availability. So she says, I just went to place an order and none is on order. Now keep in mind they're in they're in run up, so this is how they talk. So just went to place an order and none is on order. The Salita team, which is our wholesale team, has dropped off these samples to everyone and now eight to twelve weeks lead time. How can we have these products out in the field if none is at least on order? Okay. So that's what she said. Like, you know, we don't have it's gonna take forever. What's going on? And uh Typically, the lead time would be six to eight weeks on import. She's already knows in her mind that it's eight to 12 weeks. So he responds, um, and this isn't a great response, but um, he responds and says, because you need 15,000 square feet to move a container, because Southern Europe shuts down in August, because freight has increased from $3,000 to $12,000 a container, and it's going up again in October, because factories don't have the tile anyway, because ships don't have containers to load with. And then he says, really, we need to switch to domestic supply. And then he says, also, we're going to be increasing the prices again on imports to reflect higher shipping costs. So in that one email, you can sense his frustration and there's a lot to unpack, unpack there in, in terms of what's going on. So um, I want to start with, the, uh, you know, just that's the state of our internal workings, but I want to start with, um, you know, a little bit of background. So um, currently, and I'm only speaking to tile because that's all I know. So if there's other, you know, Florence that you're concerned about or other items, I really don't know. So um, in terms of tile, 70% um, of the U.S. consumption of tile is still imported. Okay, so 70% we're still getting from somewhere overseas. And then, um, you know, I'll break down a timeline of the problem. So the problem started, you know, before, before last spring. It really started in the, in the ceramic and porcelain world um, about two years ago. And um, that started with the Ceramic Tile Distribution Association going to the United States government and saying that China is not playing fair and therefore we cannot um, continue to support them. So what uh, the US decided to do was put an anti-dumping duty or a countervailing duty on Chinese product, which meant that the increase or the, 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 the percentage increase in the products went up 300%, which means effectively we couldn't get it anymore. So you take China, out of the equation. Now, China was one of the, the bigger suppliers to the U.S. market. You take them out, and then there's a bit of a scramble, right? So now we're going to Europe. And in the, uh, the square footage race, Spain wins because their prices are a little bit lower. In the total dollar value of imports, Italy wins because they just increased their price. Um, and we still buy it because it's Italian. But a lot of production had moved to Spain and Italy, right? And, and Spain had become the largest provider of material to the U.S. market. And then, so that brings us to spring of last year. And we all know what happened in spring last year is COVID hits. So most of these factories that had just increased their volume, their um, their sales because people had switched from China to Spain and Europe, they, the factories had to shut down. So first of all, you have the guys, before they shut down, you have the guys sitting in offices making judgment calls. And they're saying, well, you know what's going to hit the fan. So we, what 
what we're going to do is we're going to have to reduce our production by X amount. Usually it was about 20%. So I said, we're going to stop making about 20%. So they started to slow down production and making less tile anyway, because they thought consumption was going to go down. Then they got shut down. So then they couldn't make tile at all. And then as, as things started to ramp up, it ramped up really quickly, as we know, it boomeranged, as we know, and we went from nothing to drinking out of a fire hose. So um, we went, uh, then after that, the, the next thing happened is the, um, the value of the dollar was uh, adversely affected versus the euro. So you see a, a, a spike in cost and then the price of containers start to go up. And then we couldn't get containers to load the material with. So there was a point in spring, summer last year where we're ordering material that would have taken six weeks and now it's taking now eight to 12 weeks as the person Ronak alluded to because there's not the actual container to put the tile in. So that, that's causing delays. And then when it gets on the ship, the ship gets to port, specifically Long Beach, and it's circling the ports. They're not able to unload it. And that's shortage of labor at the ports to unload the material. And then the price of containers went up again. And then the factories see that the price of material is, is the price of uh, freight is going up, so they're forecasting less demand, so therefore they stop making as much product. Then it's the price of containers go up again, and the availability of product goes up again. Then, you know, just this, just this week, what we're seeing is, is that um, factories are just completely pulling out of the U.S. market. And I say factories, but I mean brands. So there's a group called Azalieber. Azalieber owned... Um, two of our other factories, Click and Mir. So you're talking about three brands, Azalever, Click, uh, and, and Mir. We put them all under our Dabney Road collection on our private label, but um, three different factories in Spain. Well, the reality is there's one owner of those three. That owner sold. They sold to a company that needed production. They didn't need sales. So they didn't, weren't worried about the US sales. So immediately they came in and they cut Mir. So two series gone. And they cut click. So another four series gone. Overnight, they come in, press release, they take over the company, and then we can't get them anymore. Now, why can't we get them anymore? Because they um, they have determined that the, it's it's not important for them at a lower price point to try to play in the U.S. market because the freight has gone up from three thousand to twelve thousand. And if there's fifteen thousand feet on a container, you know, quick math says the freight went up about a dollar. So to give you an example, if we are buying tile for 45 cents and we're paying 30 cents freight, we're landing it for a dollar, for 75 cents, right? Now we pay, instead of paying um, 45 cents for the tile, we pay 75 cents for the tile because of the price increases and the value of the euro. And then we pay a dollar to get here. So same tile, it used to cost us about 75 cents to get here, now it costs us $1.75. So that's some of the issues that work. Question. Sure. If they are producing so much less tile, why is there such a shortage for containers? It would seem like they would have plenty of containers that aren't being filled that they would be available. Well, these aren't just tile containers. These are containers for everything that ships all across the world. Oh, yeah. well, that's what I mean. But if, if we went through COVID and all of a sudden production was re reduced, wouldn't that mean there's a stockpile of containers? Well, there's there should be a stockpile of containers, right? That's a good question because you, if the if and the same thing happens across all the shortages that we see, you know, all everything that we were able to get very easily that we can't get now is um, held up because of containers. I haven't got any real clarity on where those containers yeah. are. They're somewhere in the world, but they're somewhere. not available. Yeah. Well, there's no one to load them. Yeah, th that's another problem is there's no one to load them. And there's there's no one to unload. Mm -hmm. And what we see in, in factories, what we see on the domestic side. Now, you know, here's the solution. That was all the problems. The solution is by domestic. So we're gonna move all of our purchases 
to domestic. That's not hard for us because only about 10% of our purchases were European anyway. So we can move to domestic. But you really have to rethink the way that you're buying domestically. You can't buy, um, you know, you can't special order anything anymore. Cut order distribution is almost, I don't want to say it's dead, but it's very difficult because the, the factories don't have people to pull 10 boxes of this, five boxes of this, six boxes of that. They do have enough people to pull 16 pallets of one thing and ship it. So um, the solution is domestic supply. Look for United States made product, or at least North America. So United States manufacturing, there's lots of robust manufacturing in the United States. It's mainly in Tennessee, so it's not very far away. But it used to be that that material used to be less expensive for us to get it from Spain than it would be from Nashville, Tennessee. That has now changed. And so we buy a lot more domestically. Our challenges with domestics are the availability of people to pull the tickets in the U.S. factories and then the trucking to get it here. Um, and then there's minor freight, uh, minor, minor freight um, increases. But, you know, the example where we took tile that was 75 cents now we pay a dollar 75 for it no one's going to buy it because it looks like it costs 75 cents right so what we what we've um now bought is u.s product landed that cost us 90 cents well it costs you know a few pennies more and we we wouldn't have done it before but now it's the best option so while we're seeing price increases on our domestic supply it's not it's 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 minor compared to the major increases on the European containers. Now, then you get into, you know, the, the type of material you're using. So 12 to 24 porcelains, no problem. I mean, those are standard. You can get those from Tennessee all day, all night. There's not any shortage of those. There's plenty of pr production um, manufacturing capacity. You can get those. It's the things that aren't typically made in the United States. There's really only one factory making wall traditional wall tile in the united states and so that's that's been a challenge we we try to focus on north america so mexico has been a good partner to be able to get product and they have plenty of production down there um dot mounted mosaics so like the the inexpensive mosaics are hard to get the expensive yeah. mosaics yeah well they're just taking the expensive mosaics they can get well maybe they can get they just take the field tile that cut it you know that kelly um and um, they cut it, and, but the problem is getting someone to cut it. The, um, the inexpensive dot mounted mosaics, there's only a few factories in the, United, in the world that are making them. So um, there's more demand for wall tile. We can't get anything out of China. So it does put a strain on the, the supply chain. Um, so what we've done is, you know, we have a total of about 75 vendors that we buy from. Um, less than 10% of those are imports. Um, we spent more time, I spent more of my time buying product than I have selling product, which is reverse for me. Usually I'm in the field selling. Now I spend a lot of time buying. So all of our new launches this year are um, domestics. So we've got some from American Land. We've got some from Marazzi. We've got some from Florida. We've got some from some factories that we hadn't done a lot of business with. Wonder Porcelain. We've got some new products from them in Nashville. Um, Del Conca has some... Oh. Um, some new products, inner ceramic. Inner, so inner ceramic is really cool because they have, um, they make wall tile in the United States. So we got a really nice line um, from them, but that's where we're trying to change or, or that's how we're trying to react to what's going on. And then we're trying to educate our staff to push people to stock material. A lot of the specialty vendors that, you know, a high end, design build firms like yourselves use the spear techs, the Sohos, the anthologies, the Elons. Typically there's much smaller companies than a Morris Tyler mosaic top. I mean, they're just not as, as, as big, they're niche and they're going to run into major service issues when a hundred percent of their product offerings is, is imports. So we try to educate the customers and we try to store steer towards domestic, but sometimes Domestic just didn't get it done because it's 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 pretty boring if I'm being blunt. Like the U.S. production, they make you know, fifty thousand feet of one skew and one color, so they have to sell from coast to coast. 
So you see a lot of pretty basic looks, a lot of white crayon visuals, slate visuals, or you know, concrete visuals. Nothing real crazy, um, but we can get the crazy stuff from Europe because they're selling all over the world. And if they only sell us a couple of pallets, no big deal. And if the domestic suppliers, they're not export, so they have to be able to sell it throughout the United States. So they only make boring tile. So that's the challenge from a design aesthetic is how you're going to take what is actually available and make it look good. You know, because honestly, you know, we were going through this with our staff. I was showing the new products that we bought and I, I put them out and here's one tile from Wonder Porcelain and here's one tile from uh, the Mohawk group, Muskogee, whatever, um, different plants. And the tiles ended up right next to each other. And they were like, is that the same tile? And I'm like, no, it's not the same tile. They're like, why'd you buy two tiles that look exactly the same? And I said, you know, to be honest, in this 2021 world, sometimes I don't even look at the tile. You know, it's, it's about availability and price point where we can get price point that's comparable to um, our European production so that we don't increase our prices um, buy so much and then it's about having capacity to make it again and so that you don't get in a back order situation i mean we we've gotten um you know our our biggest vendor is american only and so we have some issues with some of their products so our staff will say american only sucks and i said well american only produces in nine factories in north america eight of them do not have back orders if you look at our back order list it is about 60 products all 60 of those products are one factory, Monterey, Mexico. And they got hit with the, obviously the shutdown uh, during COVID. They got hit with uh, less forecasts. They got hit with um, that shutdown in with the, uh, the storm in Dallas wasn't allowing natural gas. So they couldn't turn on the kilns. When you turn off a kiln, you can't just turn it back on. It's not a light switch. It takes two weeks to get it up and running. So there's a lot of things that have, have caused the issues. The reality is we have a lot of tile. It's just people want 1 billion choices and we only have like 1 million choices. So um, if we can steer to domestic supply, we're not gonna see major price increase. Um, and we're, we're not gonna see availability concerns that we have. And then in terms of Europe, um, you know, I'm assuming that it's going to unwind itself, that it's not going to stay like this forever. But the factories are are fleeting the U.S. market um, quickly. So it's going to be a, a little bumpy, but you know, we it's not like we don't have tile or access to all tile. Now, Leo, to um, to go back to your question, I, I I really don't know where the containers are. They're got to be they're shipping them somewhere. And their the flow has been messed up. Um, and if the availability of the containers are back, then the availability of people to load them is not back or unload them, rather, in the United States. Um, and that, that's all the tile side. Um, outside of Curdy Board, Leo, we're pretty much back in stock with everything. Um, certainly on the MAPE side, we're we're much better. What we did there was um, we used to order truckloads that had like six or 12 products on it. Now we just order a truckload of one product. We just thought if they have a shortage of labor to pull the tickets, if we make the ticket really easy for them to pull, like one ticket, 16 pallets, then they'll ship it. And that actually works. So we're good on Mape products, on Schluter products. The thin sets are still hit or miss. Um, they have been telling us eight to 12 weeks. Um, I haven't seen it that bad. We, I mean, we order it every couple of weeks so that, you know, we try to stay in, in, in so that when 12 weeks comes, we'll get that product. And then 12 weeks comes with the next product, 14 weeks. Um, the, the main problem is Curdy Board. Now, what I've been told about Curdy Board is that they don't want to just make some and then sell it real quick and make some and be out. So they're trying to replenish inventory and they're trying to make um, enough that they can, they they won't be out, you know, after day one. I don't know if that logic makes any sense. I mean, they're usually much smarter than I am, so perhaps that will work. Um, but I don't know that we're going to have any of this year, to be honest. Wait, what about the profiles and the other products? Profiles, we haven't seen any issues on. 
um, on uh, Deidre, no problem. On actual curdy, we have an insane amount of curdy. An okay. insane. They said the same thing with curdy. They said, hey, we're going to run out of curdy. So we bought like double curdy. Now you can fit like 54 rolls on a pallet times 16 pallets. So a truckload's like 100 grand. So double ordering curdy is, is, from a financial standpoint, isn't very good. But from consumer standpoint, we have plenty of curdy, plenty of Ditra. Um, Power trays of, and et cetera. Trays, um, heated cables, um, thermostats. And, I mean, really, it's somewhat of a thin set. And we have all set. We can't seem to get Schluter set, which is their unmodified, but we can get their all set, which is counterintuitive because other people are saying they have problems with polymers. So you would think that we'd get the unmodified thin set. We're not able to get the unmodified thin set. We can get the modified. Um, but yeah, the big the big problem is the curry board at this point. Can I ask one more question? Going back sure. to the tile. Yeah. The... Um, Richmond favorites, the uh, little mosaics. Yes. Is there a solution at all yet? Yeah. Um, so, which mosaics are you talking about? The uh, CC mosaics, like the ceramic mosaics, or are you talking about um, like the metro, the the pennies, the uh, hexes? Yeah, yeah. We are in okay in uh, shape with those. We get them from Roca, like mosaic got them from Roca. Mm -hmm. um, and they found another source and our, our inventory is actually pretty decent on those. Um, we're in the process of, I'm not saying completely getting a way of Rokas, but we're in the process of bringing some in from Turkey, from Vitra. They have a really good um, product mm -hmm. line. Um, so we're in the process of bringing containers first into Baltimore and then into Norfolk. And then we're, we're the last ones because we have good inventory of of Roca. Um, so that isn't uh, something we've identified. And there's new, there's newer updated shapes and different sizes. It's not even completely redundant with what Roca does. So we'll we'll get on that pretty soon. Um, but to, it, you know, it's still got to come from Turkey. And then natural stone. And what's the natural stone challenge? Do we have that in the States? Like You said yeah. Elon, Elon earlier, which made me nervous. Elon is struggling. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're struggling. It's hit or miss um, because they're not a very big company. So they were, you know, if something, they weren't going to try to take a year supply of something because that would drain their cash flow. I mean, it's just not a big enough company to do that. So um, they um, they have some products, but it, it's it's certainly hit or miss. Um, we should be able to alternatives with TopQ. TopQ has enormous amount of inventory okay uh, so that's a good alternative um and marble systems is is um is sort of fine i mean but even i don't think it's been hurt the worst out of our stone suppliers but you don't see any like inventory issues with some of the natural stone mosaics and no, oh, no we have we have what we the venza um so i've not seen anything major on that side on okay. the stone the stone demand is, is pretty small you know, there's only a small percentage of clients that are using it. Hiring clients. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, all, I mean, most of those guys, the Elons, the Spiritex, the Marvel Systems, Top Coos, they've all started bringing in porcelains. And we're like, well, we don't need porcelains. We're like, you want porcelains? <laughs> yeah, we, we're the porcelain people. You want porcelains? Um, because they're and so they're they're the supply of um marble is, is is still okay. Just the demand decreases year over year as the portions get better. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Makes sense. Okay. Any other questions? LVP, LVT, anything about that? Oh, uh, nightmare. I mean, we're, we're like such a small player and I kind of forget about it, but um, we buy it mainly through Eva. So we buy it through distribution and mm -hmm. they buy 50 billion feet. You know, when they buy a cut, they buy a hundred containers. Um, so we've been good because we rely on their inventory. The private label that we did ourselves um, out of Vietnam, our freight, um, 
I mean, we, we bought landed into the port in Norfolk and it's gone up at least 60%. Great. Yeah. So that there, the, the freight out of uh, Asia has been the worst. Um, I think it's up to upwards of almost 20 grand a container. And that's it's just for the container. I think that that's where um, Bob might have had it a little bit more insight. I don't mess with a whole lot of containers of um, LVP. Okay. Thank you. Sure. With, from us speaking to some of the manufacturers, they are actually having to, some of the bigger companies are actually having to invest in more automation just because of the labor shortage, which is going to take time to be developed and then paid for. But in the long run, it'll benefit everybody, but it's just the labor is just killing them. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's our challenges as well. I mean, our, our, my uncle came to me and he doesn't come in all the time and he doesn't really harp on us too much, but he came in and he said, it looks like in the warehouse, you hire indiscriminately. You don't really do background checks. You don't really check people out. You just hire anyone that walks in the door. And and our answer was like, yes, that's what we do. You know, because we can't get any people otherwise. You know, if you show up for the interview in the warehouse, then you typically get it. Um, unless there's something really. If you really have a pulse, you're hired. Yeah. How about you? How how are you finding it? Are you able to find labor? Uh, I've kind of been blessed in that people have sought me out to work for me. So, which is, I've been fortunate in that part. My, my big problem is just getting the materials to produce more. Uh, it's just, if I could get cabinets, we could have doubled our volume this year. Literally. It's just, that's been the killer has been the materials. Oh, that's so brutal. Sean Collard yeah. is with us from Costin. Hey, Sean. Hey, guys. I apologize for being late. It's uh, a hectic time in our industry, and I just couldn't get myself away. We understand they were asking about some LBT stuff, so maybe if you can give us an update of what you guys are dealing with as far as products and solutions, if there's other things that maybe we should be pushing or asking, you know, letting our clients know are more available. You know, um, it is certainly a, a big challenge, as I'm sure you guys have been discussing. Uh, product made overseas, which most of the LBT, LBPs are made overseas. And whether it's uh, port issues or uh, uh, container issues, and then when they get here to the United States, uh, you know, the trucking issues. And so, but we've been very lucky in that uh, we've got some long-term relationships with suppliers. And for the most part, we, we've certainly had some delays, don't get me wrong. And, uh, but we, we, we've been lucky to change people to products that we can get in a reasonable amount of time. And like, obviously that's a, that's a relative statement because sometimes a reasonable, reasonable amount of time has been several weeks up to a month late. But, um, uh, it's certainly been good. challenging. <laughs> I've had Armstrong throw me under the bus. I, I can't tell you how many times. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it, it's uh, it's been very difficult when uh, there's a certain look and a certain product that people or homeowners have definitely wanted. Uh, that's been that's been our challenge. Where I wouldn't say inflexible is the wrong word because people certainly deserve what they want and. Uh, and uh, we haven't been able to, to change products over to something similar from a different manufacturer or a different distributor. Um, but certainly, uh, you know, floor covering is not being exempt from the challenges of supply and demand. What is Armstrong doing in, you know, at, in Atlanta? Are they man manufacturer there or are they just distributing out of there? Um, you know, they have several manufacturing facilities around the United States, but uh, for the most part, the majority of their product is made abroad. Oh, uh, okay. And I would say China is 
probably their most most of their manufacturing facilities. They've tried to move as many factories as quickly as possible to other countries. Uh, mainly, though, you know, that was all sparked on by the surcharge or uh, about 15%. That was maybe two years ago. But then they're running into troubles, uh, as I'm sure you guys know, in that uh, China has flexed their muscle in terms of they have, they've been the biggest customer from these big logistic uh, boating uh, ship companies uh, like Merck and all those folks and said, hey, you know what? So we want to get most of the access to most of the containers most of the ships. So if they manufacture in Cambodia or, or one of those other countries, you know, in, in the Far East, uh, China has kind of sucked in most of the, de the supply and demand, uh, or it's not demand, but the supply of uh, the containers and, and, and big distribution on those ships. Well, that's where the containers went then. With. Yeah. That is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they've definitely flexed their muscle in terms of, uh, they, you know, they're the biggest customer, uh, in, you know, so it, it's been, it's been quite a challenge. So what are you guys pushing your um, sales reps to, to, to talk to clients about like what products are more available or are you trying to steer them in a certain direction? You know, I think the, there isn't any one direction that, doesn't have the problems or the hiccups. Even locally uh, made products, which is you know probably the, the best example of that would be unfinished hardwoods. You know, American grown and made uh, red and white oak that we sand and finish on site. Even that product we've had a hard time getting. Um, you know, there's certainly sort of what we would call maybe an allocation although not officially, you know, we haven't taken on any new customers in that realm. Uh, just because if you haven't bought from us historically, we feel like any, any product we can get, we deserve, we, we certainly owe it to the customers that have been loyal to us and have historically bought that product from us. Having said that, you know, that is the same throughout our sort of product categories, whether it's tile or vinyl, we haven't taken on any new builders uh, in the last 18 months because we want to be loyal to those people that, that have been with us for a long time. And uh, I think the best thing our sales folks are doing and have done is communicate up front to our builder customers, remodel, home, uh, retail, commercial, is that, hey, guys, where, you know, it's hard to get products. The quicker we can make a selection, the, picker, the quicker we can source it or tell you that, it's not available until a certain date. Now we're getting back some confirmations now for product that's available in the first quarter of 2022. Oh. And uh, obviously we let our customers know and uh, hopefully they can reselect or if they thought well in advance, they can wait. So I think that's been the best thing we can do is, is tell the folks, hey, you know, forewarn them that it's tight. Nothing unlike most or maybe every product category in in construction yeah we've had to go to instead of the priority being for the customer to pick out what they want they need to pick out what's in stock right and you know what's in stock today literally may not be in stock tomorrow that's that's the crazy that's, thing that's why we have to order as soon as they go under contract everything's ordered that day or within two days of contract because I've had stuff, you know, sold out from underneath me. Just, oh, yeah. a, matter, just a matter of a few days. So, Whit, what are you doing with your sales team when they're meeting with the customers? Trying to push our, our stock products. I mean, that's just the bottom line. Even if it's something that had been so easy to get, that's only in Eldersburg, Maryland, it's not easy. Nothing's easy anymore. So we try to try to push stock products. Of course, not all of those are in stock, but um, at least we know the devil we're dealing with. So um, we, we certainly try to push stock, but you know, we stock products that are fairly basic and it doesn't work for all, for all customers. So um, you know, at that point, then we try to get an idea of when the job's going and then, the, and then we try to check stock. But again, if it's, if, if the selection is done today and the job's not going 
in four months checking stock today, it's not going to help us. Jerry, can we send this uh, meeting copy to the U U.S. Commerce Secretary? <laughs> <laughs> if they request it, I'll be happy to, yes. Well, somebody's out of touch up there or something. I, I don't get it. But. Just to put a little positive plug, all you guys that are vendors, uh, I appreciate you guys reaching out to me, um, kind of keeping up with what we have selected letting me know if there's issues and um, before it gets to be too close. I really appreciate it. I just want to throw that out there. Yeah, thank you guys, because I stocked up on six months worth of uh, Curdy board. So what if you need to buy some? <laughs> I can make hey, don't tell good. anybody you got it. Leo, <laughs> can we talk? <laughs> yeah, look, you just exposed yourself here. I know, that was, and oh I boy. Gotta pay, I got to pay for a $30,000 wedding, so <laughs> just come with a full wallet. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to make hay while it shines, huh? Yeah. I have one last question for you, Whit. Maybe, um, are you seeing any bullnose inventory issues, or are we good? Oh, always. It is always bull. <laughs> well, besides the always. There's nothing. Um, well, yeah, I would say that it is worse than it had been because in the U.S., we always had bullnose. Obviously, in Europe, there's only one place that makes bullnose, and they make it for all the companies because only the U.S. market uses bullnose. But um, in what I've seen here, both, I went, took a trip to Dallas not that long ago, and I went to Inner Ceramic and I went to Dow Tile AO, whatever you want to call it. And both of them had taken the factories of the lines that they were making bullnose on and started making tile on because they just needed to make tile. So then they're just pushing back bullnose and hoping people are finding other solutions. So, so Schluter is our answer. <laughs> yeah, Schluter's answer. It, it's, but it's hard, you know, if you got knee walls, then you don't, I mean, you're not doing a standard tub hop, you know, that's not your game. And a standard tub hop, sure, that's great. But if you have knee walls and you have niches and you have all types of different verticals, it gets a, gets pretty tricky. But um, yeah, sure. Is there. You got her. All right. Um, so yes, there is a little bit uh, worse inventory than the usual bad inventory of Jennifer Chase, Ed, you guys field, do y'all have anything? Um, in regards to the bonus conversation there, how about um, the marble thresholds? You guys seeing that that's still kind of coming through? Because that, to me, has been the solution for knee walls, like you're saying. With, it's yeah. Just like, yeah, we're, just we're throw actually, marble on it. <laughs> we're pretty good on that. We buy it from a distributor up in Maryland. Um, we buy an insane amount of those things now. I was looking at the numbers uh, and I went to our purchaser. I was like, why do we buy these from distribution? Why do we buy a container? And, the, and he said, well, you got a quarter million dollars? And I said, uh, not for thresholds. So um, the person we're getting them from stocks them deep, deep, deep. They must have a year supply. So if there's delays, they we haven't had issues there, not going to work. That's probably what's next, though. I use that quite often as well, Chase. Yeah, it's much better aesthetic. I mean, we're a lot of people are using. Just look at the numbers. Just look at the purchases from them. It's insane. Is that Cedar? Yeah, yeah, they're they're the best. We've looked around, and there's there's no one else that can touch them. Cool. Thanks, Chase. That was a great question. Ed, Jennifer Field, anybody? Yeah, I don't have any questions, but I appreciate you guys taking the time to kind of give us a little background and understanding of what's going on. And I'm sure it's similar things than everything that we buy, um, plumbing, you know, electrical, everything is uh, <laughs> similar issues. So yeah, it's I good mean, to get a little understanding of what's happening. Hearing you guys talk, I mean, I kind of feel pretty, yeah, you know, I'll stop complaining, you know, because <laughs> yeah, tile, we can switch, we can buy domestic, we can buy, you know, or at least North America. Um, yeah, with 
the window issues that you guys run into, the appliance issues you guys run into, it's it's much easier to be aware where we sit um, than where you guys are. I mean, uh, tile is, yeah, we've had our issues, don't get me wrong, but our issues are uh, seem minimal compared to some of the things you're seeing. And then the price increases on lumber, I don't know how you guys price jobs or do what you do. Seems crazy. Jonathan. Hopefully we're making money. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> right? <laughs> Jeez. Sean, is there anything else that you'd like to, to talk about or mention? No, I just, the only, only interesting thing that I would say that I could maybe add some value, we met with a major, major manufacturer of carpet, uh, shore, shore Industries to be precise. And they obviously, not obviously, but they produce, most of the carpet is made in North America, especially in, 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 in Georgia. There's a vast, vast majority of, in, the, in, in the East Coast of the United States that comes out of Georgia, Dalton, Georgia. And we had a meeting with them, you know, similar discussion and similar seeking for solutions and maybe what the crystal ball says ahead of them. And they feel pretty confident that this logistic challenge of getting a product to the United States in a timely fashion, um, that, uh, that will only sort of get back to a balanced situation in 2023. So they, don't, so they see it's 22 to be a challenge. And they, you know, they import a lot of their laminates, the LVT, the hard the engineered hardwoods. So, you know, and, and I think I put a little weight in what they said, because just because of the size, who they are, and being an industry leader, they probably they probably got a better handle on, you know, where they're going to get their stuff from and how they're going to get it and when it's going to get reach a balanced situation again. It's going to be a long time. Does that mean shag carpets coming back? <laughs> I don't oh, know man. about that. Uh, <laughs> oh, hopefully man. not. Hopefully not. <laughs> Good question, though. <laughs> well, does, it, does anybody have anything else? Well, we thank you so much. Thank you, Whit and Sean. And I, I know how everybody and everybody on the call. We know how busy everybody is. So we, one, we appreciate your membership too. If you have any other things that you want to hear more about or vendors that you want to hear from and you need to do this kind of thing or want me to set it up, please let me know. Just email me because um, this is what it's all about. But thank you for taking time. I'm, gonna, I'm recording it. So I'm actually going to make it available on YouTube for any other members that weren't able to be here today. Um, but thank you very much. And I hope you guys have a, a great night. You too. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Take care. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Rick. Thank yeah. you, guys. Bye -bye. Yeah, everybody, thank you. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Leo. Uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Kelly. <laughs> oh, yeah, a lot of questions. <laughs> no, Thanks, good. Guys. That's good. Okay, bye, guys. Bye. bye.